My name is Tim Thompson and I'm Professor of Applied Biological Anthropology at Teesside University. And I'm David Erickson and I'm a PhD researcher and part-time lecturer at Teesside University. Um, today we've been uh, scanning these bones. These bones are from a, a larger collection and the feeling is that these remains might be gladiators. But there are some very interesting uh, marks on parts of the body, particularly on the pelvis, uh, which may be related to animal bite marks. And so we've been using this method to start the process of analysing those marks. So what we've got here is a 3D structured light scanner. Um, the st 3D structured light scanner projects a form of light onto an object. And by recording the particular dimensions of the light and the waves on the light, we can record the topology of the surface of an object that's placed in front of it. So for example, as the light fires onto this pelvis here, the shapes will bend around the light and depending on the shapes changing, it will create a 3D model. We will uh, use these models um, to start analysing the remains. Because the method is totally um, safe and non-contact, it means we can scan as many of these uh, delicate uh, fragments of bone as we want. We will then take those back to uh, our lab where we'll process the data and it will allow us to start measuring and uh, recording the dimensions of what may be the bite marks. What we will then do, uh, take some uh, bones which have been bitten by animals that we, we, we know of, things like lions and bears and uh, dogs and vultures, through a collaboration that we have with the Zoological Society of London and we will then uh, be able to match hopefully, the marks that we have on the pelvis here with the marks that we have uh, recovered from the modern animals. And hopefully we'll then be able to say if these are bite marks and which animals caused them. Uh, York Archaeological Trust invited us to have a look at these remains because, uh, for two reasons. One, because we've done work on animal um, bite marks and uh, trauma uh, to the bone. Dave's PhD was on uh, traumatic injuries. Uh, and partly because we... Um, are really the only people who are doing this sort of scanning on skeletal remains as well. So um, the combination of those two things has kind of brought us together to have a look at this and to add a new perspective on the, uh, the remains. So we've worked in the area of looking at bite marks for a while now. We've published um, several papers on animal attacks on human remains. Um, so when we came down for a preliminary study a few weeks ago, we had to look at the marks that were on the skeletons and we've gone away and we've researched those types of marks uh, in the literature that is available currently in the forensic context and the archaeological context. Through our examination of the literature, we've found uh, a number of examples um, of similar sorts of injuries. There aren't many. There's nothing really published in the archaeological literature because the problem that you have there is you're never entirely sure what animals cause the damage. Um, there's a, there are a couple of forensic examples um, where we've seen similar sorts of bite marks in um, similar sorts of regions of the body as well. And so we've been extrapolating that information uh, to here. The next thing for us to do after we've completed the scans here today will be to take all the data back uh, to our lab and just work through that and create the 3D models on the computer and take out all the noise and the, the noisy data. Once we've done that, we're able to do some of the uh, analysis, some of the measurements which we can take directly from these models that we're creating rather than from the actual uh, remains themselves. And once we've done that, we will then start taking some measurements from modern material uh, modern bones that have been bitten by animals and um, modern casts of, of animals as well and we will be able to link the two together uh, and compare things like the depth of the bite marks, the distance between the teeth, um, the relationship between the bite marks on either side of the bone. Okay, so the light from the projector projects onto the object and the patterns on, from the light wrap around the object, that's how we can create our 3D model. And the camera creates the, the RGB ratios by overlaying the texture onto this 3D model that's created by the projector. So what we do is we take a, an image from a particular angle to start with. And now it's taking a series of images uh, and different types of striped light to create a 3D point cloud. Once that point cloud is created, during, with the 12 different images that this particular scanner does, we turn it again 30 degrees and we retake it. So we do this 12 times, 30 degrees a turn, and to make sure that we can get every specific side of the, of the object. If it's a particular complicated object, we'll take more images than necessary, just 
so we can get inside all of the nooks and crannies. Once we've gone all the way around and we've done a complete rotation here, we will then have to change the position of the bone on the um, turntable so that we can then image the parts of the bone which were previously hidden by the, uh, by the foam or the stand that we're using. So here's a 3D scanner that takes the image of the object. We turn the object around at 30 degree increments uh, and record it so it gives a specific individual scan and we merge those scans together creating a fully watertight model. So here on the screen we have a 3D, a, an example of a 3D image uh, which we can move around in, in the 3D plane. We can also zoom in and zoom out on specific features.